able to ensure members on all sides of this House are free from interference, to train, to equip and support members and all staff to better identify and respond to these challenges and to ensure that not just their digital communications are protected, but also their offices, staff and their families. Yep. Madam Deputy Speaker, this revelation is shocking but not unexpected. It is the latest episode in a long pattern of hostile Russian activities and from other hostile states, including from Iran and the DPRK, both against Britain and against our allies. There is more that we can do. Labour has committed to the establishment of a democratic resilience centre in government to work with our allies to protect our democratic values, political institutions, elections and open societies. Will the government commit to creating one? As the Shadow Home Secretary has outlined, we don't yet have the robust and long-lasting equivalent of the cross-government contest strategy for dealing with hostile states. Will the government commit to creating one? Labour has proposed a joint cell between the Home Office and Foreign Office to speed up decision-making, share intelligence and expertise and remove traditional barriers between the departments. Will the government commit to creating one? The government still has not amended terror legislation to allow government to ban hostile state-sponsored organisations who are <coughs> undermining our national security. Will the government commit to doing so? The Russia report has still not been fully implemented. Will the government urgently update the House on when it will be completed? And this is not just about cyber attacks and, digi and direct digital interference, it's about wider malign activity, including the use of AI and deepfakes to seed false narratives, spread lies and foment divisions, including the widespread use of dis, mis and malinformation to undermine our democracy through mainstream and social media and other means. Labour has committed to urgently introducing binding regulation of those companies, developing the most powerful frontier AI which could be used to disrupt elections. Will the government commit to doing so as well? And will the government commit to ensuring there is adequate resourcing for the National Cyber Security Centre and the Intelligence Agency and the Defending Democracy Task Force? Madam Deputy Speaker, I want to give the Minister every assurance that the Labour Party will work in partnership and full cooperation with the government and all relevant authorities to take every necessary step to address this threat and protect the integrity of our political process from hostile interference. As politicians from different parties, we have all stood united across the House against Putin's imperial aggression in Ukraine. That unity is a source of strength and of pride. In the face of these threats, this House must remain united again. Britain must remain united. Democracies must remain united in defence of our institutions and against those who seek to undermine the values of our society, uh, the great values that our society is founded upon. Yeah. Minister. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm very grateful for the, uh, the, the tone and constructive content of uh, uh, the right hon. Gentleman's uh, response. And he's absolutely right. Of course, 2024 is a bumper year of elections involving some 70 elections, uh, billions of people uh, across 40 countries. And it is a matter of trust and confidence. And that is why we have timed this uh, statement uh, to ensure that its uh, full deterrent effect is is properly timed. He asked if we were confident that we had uh, uh, uncovered the full extent. Uh, we do have a high degree of confidence uh, with regard to this specific uh, incident, but of course uh, it is a question and our duty is to remain uh, ever vigilant. And uh, the lesson uh, of this sort of activity is that uh, a higher degree of vigilance is, uh, is necessary and that's the posture that we now maintain uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, any future activity. He, I, I'm grateful that he welcomed the, the designation. Uh, specific action has been taken uh, from uh, the National Cyber Security Centre uh, in, in accordance and together with uh, House authorities to ensure that any, uh, all of the individuals affected have a higher degree uh, of uh, 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 preventative measures and uh, the, the posture that the House authorities now has and the uh, security offer now available has been enhanced. And uh, it, it is, however, a matter of, as I said, of, uh, of uh, improved vigilance or, or on all sides. 
Uh, what additional steps uh, what might we take? It is a matter of, it's, it's the collective uh, impact, Madam Deputy Speaker, of uh, the deterrent of us naming and shaming these individuals and designating them uh, in terms of our sanctions, as well as the diplomatic effort to call Russia out. That combined with personal uh, 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 cyber security on behalf of individuals uh, is the important steps that I think uh, uh, all colleagues need to take. He asked about uh, the, the Whitehall structure with, around this. Of course, uh, and, he, and he pointed uh, to his uh, own policy of calling for a joint cell. We are confident that the Defending Democracy Task Force, led by the Security Minister, uh, it does represent a robust and uh, cross-departmental response. And uh, he's right that in the wider picture of disinformation, uh, we need to up our game to counter disinformation, to call Russia out, and better resource and energise our own security posture uh, in the cyber domain. That has been done. There is an enhanced degree of uh, resource, organisation and political will. And this public statement today is part of the uh, hugely important deterrent effect. Uh, Therese Villiers. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Intelligence and Security Committee were one of the first to really sound the alarm on this issue in their Russia report. And more recently, we've highlighted the risks posed by China in relation to interference in democratic discourse, for example, in, in think tanks and universities. So will the Minister update the House on what action the Government is taking in response to the recommendations made in those two very substantial reports? Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, Minister. The, the right honourable lady makes a very good point. Clearly, this statement is about Russia, but she draws a, a comparison to the activity of China. That's a that's, a, that's a, an appropriate reference, and I, I'm now pleased that in our domestic legislation we have the ability to ensure that countries with malign intent do not use think tanks or other fronts to influence uh, domestic uh, political discourse in a way that is contrary to the health of our democracy. SNP spokesperson Brendan O'Hara. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for prior sight of his statement. It does make disturbing reading, and I absolutely agree that Russia's actions are completely unacceptable. That members of this House and others have had their email accounts hacked is deeply concerning, but we know that this has happened before. Indeed, it's probably happening right now, and we must accept that this will almost certainly happen again. As the Minister said in his, uh, his statement, Russia's actions demonstrate a clear and persistent pattern of behaviour. Given that, has the government considered making cyber security training mandatory for all MPs and their staff? Because he'll be aware that there is a belief that one of the weakest, weakest links in our cyber defences is our staff, who are constantly targeted by un unscrupulous external actors. And although not being employees of the House, it would be a reasonable precaution for MP staff to receive in-house training on exactly what to look out for, how to avoid getting sucked into a trap, and what they should do even if they have the slightest suspicion that they are being targeted. Because, Madam Deputy Speaker, democracy is under attack. And, and just last week, the Canadian government's communication security establishment released a new report on cyber threats to elections, saying that at least one quarter of national elections around the world were being targeted by some manner of threat and that China and Russia were the country's most active when launching increasingly sophisticated influence operations by spreading disinformation seeking to push elections in a specific direction. And perhaps most worryingly, the Canadian report says that in relation to AI undermining elections, that their assessment is that it is very likely that the capacity to generate deep fakes exceeds our ability to detect them. So with MPs facing having their emails hacked, the democratic process being undermined, with a UK general election just around the corner. What is the government doing to proactively defend the integrity of those elections, and when can this House expect to hear about it? Minister. Well, Madam Minister, I'm very grateful for the uh, Honourable Gentleman's uh, comments and questions. And he's absolutely right about the, the, the scale of the threat, but I think it's also important that, alongside us calling Russia out and describing uh, the nature of the threat, we also point out that it has failed in terms of uh, their intent to undermine our 
uh, the, our, our domestic politics. It was, it, was a, it was a genuine attempt which has failed and, and we are now more aware and more resilient. That's why we're calling them out. But we should also be proud that our, uh, uh, the institutions of our democracy are resilient and, and remain so and they have failed in, in their efforts and they will continue to fail because we will continue to uh, call them out. He made a very good point about staff training. Uh, it's not a thing that I think we should mandate, however we, we are and have worked uh, on, a, on a, a much enhanced offer uh, to ensure that uh, cyber security is, is, is root and branch part of the normal working practice of MPs and staff. So uh, that offer has uh, radically improved. The House authorities will continue to keep uh, colleagues up to date. And uh, I think uh, in terms of working practice, a higher degree of uh, awareness uh, is very important. And that's uh, part of the, the, the rationale behind the statement today. Uh, Bob Blackman. <clears throat> thank, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I welcome my honourable friend's update to the House. I'm sure I'm not alone in having received a large number of template emails uh, on particular subjects. Uh, when I've diligently written back to those individuals, they've said they didn't write them, they didn't send them. And it's quite clear that there are hostile actors who are collecting <coughs> email addresses of our constituents and then using them to subvert the democratic process. So will my honourable friend take the message back, not only to the Foreign Office, but across the House, that this needs to be investigated and stopped? Well, my honourable friend, it's a very, very good point. Uh, the, uh, the, this, this practice is sometimes extremely convincing as well, the, the, the use of uh, uh, emails to, to uh, insert uh, malware or to entice uh, the user uh, to click on a, on a uh, uh, malicious link. He makes a very good point. Staff have a great volume of these sorts of e emails to deal with, and I think that's why we're pleased that uh, there's a greater level of awareness uh, in terms of House authorities, and I think staff should seek guidance from House authorities in terms of uh, a more secure approach. Uh, Dame Angela Eagle. Thank you yeah, very yeah. much, um, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Minister contributed to a very good debate uh, in the EU-UK Parliamentary Assembly, which met um, in Westminster earlier this week and touched upon some of these issues. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, we are clearly dealing here with hybrid war. There's no other phrase for it. Uh, and whilst I, um, I commend the Minister for coming to the House and um, giving us this information, uh, the response, which is to sanction two people, seems rather mild yeah. compared to the efforts that are going on. So will he say something more about that? And will he also say something about the coordination across Western democracies and allies uh, in what is going to be the year of elections next year. We must all coordinate um, so that we can spot patterns and deal with this threat. Here, here. Well, yes, Madam Speaker, she sh the Right Honourable Lady should be reassured that while the uh, specific announcement today is, uh, pertains to two individuals, that is indicative of a, a, a huge uh, and sustained institutional effort to tackle this threat by way of uh, a vastly improved defensive cyber capability uh, right across our nation, uh, an international response working hand in glove with Five Eyes partners uh, uh, globally, and, uh, and, and a huge diplomatic and security effort to make sure this is called out and uh, pursued. And that, that, that's not just deterrence, it's also enhanced uh, resilience. So while the, the numbers of individuals is, is small, uh, she should be reassured that the institutional work is, is tremendously well resourced and, and entirely determined. Simon Fell. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And thank you uh, to the Minister for his statement. I'm incredibly grateful, I'd like to put it on record, to uh, the Speaker's Office, the uh, Security Minister and the House authorities for the work they've done to increase our awareness and improve our protections within Parliament. But we're in a very privileged position, and frankly, the, the fabric of our society that's most at risk are those parts that don't have access to that sort of information, whether they're SMEs supplying critical national infrastructure, the parts of the economy that, that keep us going, or indeed those who are protecting our elections. So could the Minister perhaps speak a little bit around what protections are going to be offered to them and what information is going to be offered to them to support us? Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, he, he makes a very good point. And, um, this, this, this affects us all, it's not just parliamentarians or those in public life, it does affect uh, those in commerce. 
and the National Cyber Security Centre has published guidance and is available to provide guidance to those businesses that need to ensure that they have uh, a high degree of uh, cyber security and resilience, uh, particularly those involved in, uh, for example, critical national infrastructure. Barry Sheehan. <coughs> Mr. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, um, it's been refreshing to have the statement this morning, but uh, what I'm asking myself as I listen to the Minister is what actions are going to be taken. This is a very serious <coughs> challenge to our democracy. Indeed, it's a serious challenge not just to members of Parliament. I know that a major takeover of a British company by, in this case, the China, a Chinese entity, the senior executives said that when they moved into meetings, the Chinese knew more about the company, its secrets, its background, that they could only have got by illegal means. So it's everywhere, and it coming particularly from Russia, from China, perhaps from Iran and North Korea. But could we have an action? Yes, we do need to train up our staff and members of parliament, but I was brainwashed as a child by James Bond, the novels, Madam Deputy Speaker, as maybe you have, that we have a wonderful system of intelligence. Is our intelligence service up to the job? Do they need more resources? Minister. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, the right honourable gentleman asked about action. It's a, it's a good question. I can give a good answer, which is that uh, in terms of our domestic legislation, we are now thankfully in a position to ensure that foreign countries with malign intent cannot uh, at, uh, freely invest in critical na national infrastructure without the, the permission and the purview of government ministers. And, the, and, min and ministers have taken specific action to ensure that divestment has taken place in certain commercial entities uh, where national interest is at stake, and that will continue to be the case, which is a radically uh, uh, altered uh, posture from, in terms of uh, the government in, in recent years, and we should all be encouraged by that. And he made a reference, uh, he made a very welcome reference to James Bond, and of course I won't, we, uh, it's the policy of government never to comment on the security services, uh, but uh, I can ensure that they are up to speed and very, very well resourced. Leila Moran. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. This is shocking, but not at all surprising. Uh, we've heard before about possible interference in the Brexit referendum, then the Russia report, which wasn't implemented, and we are perhaps on the cusp of a general election, perhaps sooner than later. My question to the Minister is what conversations are being had with the Electoral Commission and also the political parties, because it's not just MPs that we need to think about, it's also the candidates, mm -hmm. uh, but also what plans does he have to take a whole-of-society approach so that voters can build resilience to this? so that our democratic process and the ballot is completely secure. Minister. Well, Madam Speaker, the Honourable Lady makes a very good point and asks, asks a very good question. Uh, the threat is significant, but I should reiterate that it has failed, and I think that points to our, uh, the, our resilience of our uh, democratic institutions, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be uh, eternally uh, vigilant. We will be. Uh, it does involve all parties across the House and candidates, and a lot of the, the, the preventative work has been taken, uh, is, is been carried out by the Defending Democracy Task Force, which is specifically looking at this under the Security Minister, and she should be reassured that uh, they have the bit between their teeth. Uh, Nick Smith. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. So, this, um, can I thank the Minister for this statement? This is malevolent behaviour. I'm glad to hear of some of the government's plans, but Labour is committed to establishing a democratic resilience centre. Can I press the minister, though? Will the government please consider following our lead? Well, Madam Speaker, yes, I think that that work is already in place under the Demo Defending Democracy Task Force, under the uh, uh, wholly uh, re-energised and, and, and newly founded uh, National Cyber Security Centre established under this government with tremendous resource uh, and, uh, and energy. Uh, and whatever you call it, uh, there is a, a now a very significant effort to ensure that we deter and ensure that uh, MPs and everyone across the political spectrum is, is now in a much more secure position. Sarah Edwards. 
Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, as a new member of this House, obviously this statement is concerning, um, but I wanted to know if you could perhaps outline some of the additional support that can be offered to new members and their staff, um, particularly because there is a lot to navigate. Um, certainly there is an induction process, and I welcome that because it has helped very much. However, I think there was about 10 minutes on cyber security, and so I think it definitely could do with being updated. Yes. Well, the, the, the Honourable Lady makes a very good point. She's absolutely right. And uh, together with the House authorities, an improved and enhanced offer is being worked up. It should be, uh, it should be a default uh, daily practice, uh, cyber security, cyber hygiene, and, that's, and, she, and uh, all colleagues should be, should be aware of that, and it should be made available to all colleagues and staff. Uh, Jim Shannon. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister very much for, for his... Uh, uh, statement today. Cyber warfare is something that our government has uh, been prepping for for some time. Indeed, it has been the rationale behind lessening investment in recruitment uh, within the armed forces by saying that cyber warfare is a bigger threat. With this being the case, can the Minister confirm government pre uh, preparedness to act should the claims of the newspaper have even a slither of truth? And how can we send the message today that the UK is prepared to face the cyber threat as readily as any other threat? Thank you. Minister. Well, Madam Speaker, we are well placed. This, uh, the, the threat is very significant. The, the, the risk to national resilience is very significant uh, in, in the cyber age. Uh, a huge amount of work has been led by the Deputy Prime Minister about national resilience. Uh, defensive cyber is an important part of that, in which the National Cyber Security Centre has a very important uh, role to play. Um, so there's a, a huge, there is a, the challenge is huge, but a huge uh, amount of ground has been covered by the government, uh, and, but there's more work to do.